Do you ever tell a part of yourself to be quiet, shut up, F off, or give any other kind of unkind response? When I initially began to monitor my own thoughts, I noticed that my internal response was almost always operating in againstness. In other words, I was fighting with myself. If my perfectionistic part thought, you're so stupid, you can't do anything right, I hate you, my avoiding aspect might have jumped in with, oh, just shut up, I don't need to listen to you, ignore, 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 breathe, Om. Rather than actually addressing the issue that that aspect was presenting, which was that there was a part of my own consciousness clearly locked in the right-wrong reality that had beliefs and judgments of perfectionism, I was simply attempting to deflect the issue, to avoid the issue, or to basically sweep that issue under the rug. I wanted to change my thinking by willing myself not to think those thoughts anymore. This method got me absolutely nowhere. I want you to consider that there is a different, more supportive way to relate to yourself. Imagine that that part of your consciousness that is expressing negativity is a small child crying and raging in despair and simply kneel down, open your arms and embrace that child. Begin to pour on love and compassion. Compassion is a very nurturing and mothering energy that soothes. Imagine yourself saying things like, it's okay to cry. It's okay to feel the way you feel. I'm here with you. Everything will be all right. I love you no matter what. Become a loving parent to that child inside of yourself. Give that child everything that he or she has been missing. This is how I suggest you begin to treat yourself inside yourself with loving kindness and tenderness no matter what aspect of yourself may confront you with. There's no way to get rid of a part of yourself. And as much as you, much as you would not consider harming the suffering child who'd been locked away, it's important that these parts of your personality stop receiving the message that you want to kill them or that you wish for them to die. By wishing for a part of yourself to die or disappear, a tremendous lack of trust is established within parts of your own consciousness. If you've been very mean to yourself, it may take some time to repair and reestablish trust with your own disowned parts. Here's an example of how listening with compassion to an aspect of yourself could sound. This is an internal mental dialogue where your higher self asserts sovereignty rather than allowing the subpersonality to take the wheel of your body vehicle. Aspect. You're so stupid. You can't do anything right. I hate you. Higher self. Wow, you sound really mad. Aspect. Mad? Are you freaking kidding? I'm furious. You ruin everything. You don't do anything right. Higher self, I really hear that. You think I'm stupid and can't do anything right. I hear that. What makes you say that? Aspect, because you blew that job. It's all your fault. Hmm, self, it sounds like you think it's not okay to make mistakes. Aspect, it's not. Mistakes are bad. People who make mistakes are stupid idiots. Higher self, I really hear you think that. Aspect, it's true. Mom, dad, grandpa say that. They said I was a bad, stupid girl. And here the aspect begins to cry. Higher self, aw, it's okay. Go ahead and cry it out. I hear that they said that. That must have really hurt your feelings. I want to assure you that you are innately good no matter what, and that it's absolutely okay to make mistakes. Mistakes are how we learn. We're all smart enough to learn from our mistakes if we want to. You're innately good. You're innately smart. 
You're plugged in to the source of infinite wisdom. You can learn anything you want to know. Aspect, do you really think so? Self, I know so. We are brilliant. Now here, the aspect begins to smile and move a little closer, feeling safe, heard, and accepted. Bonds are forming. Trust is being built. Old wounds are healing. By learning how to respond inside yourself to the parts of yourself that have been previously disowned, abused, ignored, neglected, or punished, you will begin to reel these parts in to your own heart and begin to feel more whole. How you respond to your suffering parts will determine the rate at which you integrate all of your various aspects. The more self-acceptance you can hold and give to your aspects, the better they will begin to feel about themselves. The better they begin to feel about themselves, the easier it will be for them to begin to share their feelings with you. The easier it will be for you to begin to hear their pain. If you can hold in the knowing that you are not your behavior, this will be very helpful towards cultivating compassion and self-acceptance. Every part of yourself is beautiful and loving in nature. Regardless of how you were treated as a child, how you responded to your environment, and how your disowned aspects modeled unhealthy behaviors. At the level of source energy, your soul in a body, and therefore every part of you is essentially loving. Your disowned parts are simply needing and craving your own love and acceptance wanting your attention, wanting more than anything to be included in the whole of who you truly are. You aren't your behavior. And your unhealthy behaviors were patterned after gross misinterpretations of reality. Have compassion for yourself, for whatever judgments or irrationalities you bought into as a younger person that contributed to your aspects acting out. Once you can bring your aspects into the light of self-acceptance, you can begin to identify their strengths and weaknesses. Which aspect is the part of yourself that is the hardest for you to accept? How do you usually treat this part of yourself in your inner self-talk? Are you willing to consider dialoguing with this part of yourself in a more loving manner? Know that the moment you begin to pour on the love and the compassion, healing will begin to take place. Trust will be built. Amends can be made. If you can come clean with the parts that you've abused, express your new awareness, take full responsibility for your own pattern of self-talk, and let that part know that you want to listen and connect. I can practically guarantee that your aspect will want to share with you. From there, you can begin listening, learning about this part of yourself that has been locked away or in hiding. And as you strength strengthen the relationship, you will further integrate this part of your personality into your conscious, healthy, rational, higher self. Say, I am now dialoguing with my most challenging aspects with loving kindness and listening with compassion. Action step. Begin to build self-trust by intentionally inserting your higher self into your internal dialogue, responding to your most challenging aspects with love, caring, kindness and compassion. Declaration. I am now responding to my disowned aspects from my higher self. My inner dialogue is now filled with love, caring, and compassion. I now trust myself to treat myself with love and acceptance. Every part of myself is worthy of being treated kindly no matter what, many blessings of joy and vibrant freedom.